Thank you so much. Uh, yes, thank you for inviting me to give this talk. And yeah, today I would like to present you our work with my supervisor, Evelyn Tang, on stochastic topological systems and how uh, their edge localization requires non-reciprocal transition rates. And to decipher a little bit uh, this title and these words, I would like to first motivate why are we interested in topological systems and more precisely in stochastic topological systems. So essentially, uh, topological systems are known to have a very robust behavior under changing environmental conditions. And actually these notions, what we study comes from condensed matter physics. And one of the most famous examples which illustrate this concept is the quantum Hall effect. So I will briefly introduce this effect as a, as a start, starter. So essentially in this effect, we can consider a two dimensional uh, metallic sheet through which uh, we can apply a perpendicular magnetic field. And then if one drives a current in one direction through this material, then the magnetic field alters the movement of electrons such that there will be a voltage accumulated in the perpendicular direction. And the ratio between this driven current and the accumulated voltage is given by the Hall conductivity. So surprisingly, it turned out in the famous experiment by Klaus von Flitzing that this value of a Hall conductivity is precisely quantized to certain values and also um, keeps this value unchanged for a certain range of mag applied magnetic field, which is exactly this robust quantity which does not change when the condition, environmental condition change, changes. So essentially it turned out that this robust, um, uh, robust value of conductivity can be, can be attributed to an internal structure of the eigenmodes of the material, which are um, characterized by a topological invariant. And this topological invariant leads to uh, eigenmodes that are localized on the edges of the material. So essentially uh, this in, uh, invariant and also the number of edge localized states does not change when the magnetic field uh, changes within a certain range and therefore the conductivity also remains unchanged. So having this in mind, we can also think that in living organisms, there are also, uh, so many living organisms rely on robust functioning. And one can uh, think of many examples. Uh, some of them could be, for example, circadian clocks in uh, bacteria or development of a full organism or brain functioning, which all these uh, processes should give uh, a robust result under very uh, under varying uh, environments and varying conditions. And uh, thinking that um, biological processes are often uh, stochastic in nature, our approach is to consider uh, whether we can uh, define topological structures in stochastic processes and whether they could help us to uh, get robust, robust behavior in these stochastic systems. So the, with this, here is the outline of my talk where I will first introduce the notion of topology based on a condensed matter system. And I will do it for, for the simplest uh, quantum system, such that it's clear how a topological invariant leads to edge localized uh, states in the system. And after that, I will show how these topological invariants and these notions can be defined also in stochastic systems. So uh, we would hope that uh, topological invariance in stochastic systems also lead to edge localized um, states. Uh, and also we can ask why do why would we even want to have edge localized uh, states in stochastic processes? And here one could think that this localization of um, behavior of a system from a full system to, to its edge uh, could reduce the dimensions of like or reduce the number of possible states, which could lead to more stable and more robust uh, behavior of a system than if it would randomly explore the entire configuration space. So essentially, the the main uh, the main message of this work is that. Uh, in order, so edge localization is not possible in stochastic systems if we have reciprocal transition rates. 
And also we showed that if we allow non-reciprocal transition rates, then this would permit edge localization in sto stochastic topological systems. So uh, now we can move forward. And um, I would like to introduce the notion of topological invariance and topological uh, robust behavior on the example of the so-called Stuchery for Hager model, or in short, SSH, which was initially introduced to describe a behavior of an electron in a dimerized polyacetylene molecule. So the behavior of an electron in this molecule can effectively be considered as an electron living on a lattice, such that uh, with a certain probability, we can find an electron being located at specific sites of this lattice. And there is a certain transition rate for an electron to jump from one side to the other. And a specific feature of this model is that we introduce two different transition rates, one when the electron jumps within the unit cell, which we call an internal transition rate. And another when the, an electron jumps uh, from one unit cell to another, which we call an external transition rate. And to see how robust topological properties arise in this model, we can consider first two limits. So in one limit, we can assume that the external transition rate is set to zero. And then the chain will effectively split into a number of uh, unconnected dimers where in each dimer, an electron can form an asymmetric and an antisymmetric function such that its energies are opposite to each other. So essentially, all eigenstates in the system will form states with either energy E or energy minus E. And then we, we can consider uh, another uh, limit where the, the, the internal transition rate is now set to zero. And here again, in the bulk of the system, the electrons will, will again uh, get uh, eigen energies being either plus E or minus E. However, we have those uh, unattached uh, states on the left side and on the right side of the chain, which do not mix or do not form a symmetric and antisymmetric combination with other sites. So essentially, this what this uh, gives us is that all um, all electrons in the bulk will have those energies plus or minus E. However, those edge localized eigenstates will have uh, zero energies. And now we can check what will happen if we transition from one uh, situation to another by changing the relative uh, value of, uh, of the transition rates. And we will see that in the bulk, uh, the eigenstates will mix up and they will form energy bands where an electron can, can have an energy in. However, those um, eigenstates which have zero energy and which are localized on the edge will actually remain uh, localized on the edge and having zero energy for a range of system parameters. And this exactly is a property of this topological robust behavior when uh, a certain property here, edge localized states, does not change when the system parameters change. And actually, uh, these edge localized states are a consequence of an internal structure of uh, system eigenmodes, which are characterized by topological invariance. So to introduce, uh, first, be before introducing topological invariance in this model, I would like to just bring one analogy with topological invariance, which are maybe more familiar in uh, uh, bio biophysics community, uh, the linking number in a DNA structure. So we know that if we move along one strand of a DNA, uh, then we can count how many times this strand will link with another strand as we move along the DNA. And we know that this number should be integer and it cannot change if we do not cut the DNA. So essentially, in a similar way, we can construct an invariant which characterizes the internal structure of uh, eigen modes of, of, of the uh, SSH model. And um, in this case, uh, to do this, we need to consider the eigenvalues of this, of this system in the momentum space. So essentially, it turns out that we can write the Hamiltonian of the system in the momentum space, which is given just by two by two metrics. And 
the internal structure of the eigenvalues is simply given by this uh, function standing in the right corner of the matrix. So uh, this invariant is uh, tells us how many uh, times this function winds around the origin of the complex plane as we uh, change the momentum coordinate key. So we see that we have two situations. If the external rates in our system are larger than the internal rates, then uh, this, uh, this function will wind once around the origin. However, if the opposite is true, the internal rate is larger than external, then there will be no winding. And we see that, uh, so we can call the left situation trivial and the right situation topological because this invariant has zero or unit value in these cases. And uh, the transition be between one and another will exactly happen when uh, the internal rate is equal to external rate. And this coincides with the transition when the edge localized state either appears or disappears in the system. So this illustrates the fact that the internal structure of the system, which is characterized by a topological invariant, manifests in the presence or absence of edge localized states in the, in the system. So this is how it works in condensed matter physics. And uh, we are curious whether we can define all these uh, same notions in stochastic systems. And in order to do so, we can consider a stochastic process um, that happens also on a lattice. So we can um, describe the, this process in terms of probability to find a stochastic particle at each individual site, and uh, we can define transition rates from one side to another. So essentially, the dynamic of a stochastic particle will be given by a master equation where this matrix W um, and cause the transition rates uh, between the sides. And now if we compare this master equation dynamics to the Schrodinger equation of the quantum dynamics, we can actually see that these equations look quite similar and the two operators, the quantum and the stochastic one, one um, can be mapped uh, to each other just by a constant uh, factor. So this suggests us that those topological invariants, which we can define for a quantum Hamiltonian we can also determine for a stochastic transition matrix. And we can see how these invariants affect the dynamics of the stochastic process. Uh, to make it more uh, specific, uh, we want to consider a specific stochastic uh, network, which we can think of as a, a network of biochemical reaction where a certain pro protein can get phosphorylated or dephosphorylated. So in this process, we have uh, a transition when a protein can get phosphorylated or dephosphorylated with the transition rate uh, gamma external. And we also introduce an internal state of a protein, A or B, uh, which tells us whether the protein is ready, is more likely to phosphorylate, which is uh, state B, or it's ready to dephosphorylate, which is state A. And uh, the, if, you, if you also allow that the protein uh, gets phosphorylated multiple times, then these two uh, transitions form a lattice, which actually look very similar to the SSH model, which we considered in the quantum case. So now uh, we, we can ask, uh, so essentially this means that we can determine the same topological invariant as we did in the quantum case for the stochastic transition matrix. And uh, uh, thinking, uh, so what, what would mean if this topological invariant leads to an edge localized state in the system? This would mean that uh, a protein, uh, like uh, the, in, in the steady state, this protein would have a very uh, determined uh, phosphorylation level. And if a certain biological function depends on the phosphorylation level of this protein, then this, uh, this uh, system would give a stable, robust function. So essentially, uh, we want to determine whether this localization is present in the system. Uh, and now we can, uh, con uh, so we consider again the, sa the same uh, lattice, the quantum and the stochastic. However, there is a slight difference in those uh, operators. Essentially, 
uh, the transition rates are all the same. However, the stochastic uh, transition matrix also has those diagonal terms, which determine the sum of all outgoing rates from each individual site. And uh, in, the, uh, in the bulk of the material, these uh, outgoing rates are all the same everywhere. So essentially, it does not affect the topological invariant, which we can define in this system. So this winding number that I introduced before is actually uh, exactly the same in quantum and stochastic case. Uh, and uh, let's check what it gives um, in terms of localized edge states. So these are the edge states in the quantum system, as we saw before. And then if we plot the uh, steady state of a stochastic system, we actually see that its uh, steady state is homogeneously distributed over the system. And uh, this is exactly the consequence of those diagonal terms, which appear uh, in the stochastic uh, system. And what we can actually show more generally is that whenever a stochastic system has reciprocal transition rates, its, its steady state will be homogeneous. And this would happen even if uh, this uh, system, as in, in this case, as I presented, has a topological invariant. So this means that in order to achieve edge localization in stochastic systems, we need to introduce non-reciprocal transition rates. And to uh, uh, first, uh, we can just uh, check what happens if we add non-reciprocal transition rates to the same SSH model uh, that we studied before. So now we assume that the forward rates are uh, larger than the backward rates. In this case, uh, the steady state of the system and also all other eigenstates of the system will be localized on the right edge. We can actually uh, check more precisely uh, how the localization of the steady state will change if we modify non-reciprocity of the rates. So essentially, we introduce this parameter, which measures how, how, how strongly the forward rate is larger than the backward rate. And we see that the localization of the steady state grows dramatically with this uh, uh, value. What it tells us that in order to achieve edge localization in stochastic systems, we need very strongly non-reciprocal transition rates. And uh, this is a unique property of stochastic systems because in quantum systems where all these notions were initially introduced, the localization does not require non-reciprocal transition rates. So, um, now we see that, yes, there is a way to achieve uh, edge localized states, uh, edge localized steady state in stochastic systems. And I also wanted to uh, mention a couple of examples where those localized states were used to describe, uh, to, to model certain biological functions. And uh, some of these examples were introduced in this paper. And I just want to mention to give some perspective that those edge localized steady state can, for example, help to model kinetic proofreading where uh, localization can be, um, can be designed to be on the right uh, resultant, resulting uh, protein and not on the wrong resulting protein, uh, um, realizing kinetic proofreading, or also in cell signaling adaptation where the localization also happens at the position where uh, the adaptation uh, leads it to. And um, so these were examples of uh, one-dimensional uh, stochastic systems with edge localized um, uh, steady state. And we also can ask whether these, um, whether non-reciprocal transition rates can help to achieve uh, localized states in more complex systems. And for this, we can consider uh, models which realize um, currents along the edges. So such model was uh, initially proposed by Evelyn Tang and uh, Cotters uh, in this paper, and it consists of uh, two cycles. One is the 
uh, phosphorylation cycle where uh, with a certain probability a protein can get phosphorylated on one side then phosphorylated on another side then dephosphorylated uh, on one side and dephosphorylated on another side and uh, similar to the previous model we can introduce those internal uh, states which uh, tell us what is the most probable outcome for a protein to get dephosphorylated or phosphorylated and at which site. So essentially, if we combine those two cycles, then uh, this um, configuration space of a protein can again form a lattice, which um, similar to the previous case will be in a topological state. So its topological invariant will be non-zero when external rates are larger than internal rates. So what it leads uh, to in this system is that we can determine edge currents um, in the topological regime in this system. Uh, so one way to see that there will be actually those currents is just by inspection. If we uh, assume that uh, a system starts, for example, in this uh, side B on, a, on the edge, then we see that there is a larger, uh, there is a, larger probability for it to remain on the edge and uh, jump to the site C than to go inside of the bulk. And then from site C, again, there is a larger probability to continue along the edge. So it was actually suggested that these edge currents could also model certain uh, biological uh, processes, for example, cell circadian rhythm, where these edge currents can actually um, model the, these periodic oscillations of the circadian rhythm. And uh, so uh, finally, let me uh, more in more details show you how, uh, how these edge currents arise in the system and more importantly, at which conditions they arise and how the non-reciprocal transition rates are important in this case. So to do this, I would like to again start with, uh, so first uh, let's look at the reciprocal uh, system when all the forward rates and backward rates are equal to each other. And again, I would like to start first with the quantum uh, quantum model because there it's, uh, we, we know more, uh, we know better how a topological invariant is reflected in the system behavior. So essentially in the quantum model, we again have a spectrum where we have bulk states, which are um, indicated with uh, black lines here. And between these bulk states, there are uh, states that are localized on the edge. So, and uh, these edge localized states are also a consequence of a topological invariant. So these, uh, if I plot one of these states um, uh, explicitly, we can actually see that the probability is localized on the edge. And now uh, what happens if we consider a stochastic system on the same network? We know that it, it's different from the quantum by those diagonal terms. And it turns out that these diagonal terms shift the edge states such that they mix uh, with the bulk state and lose their edge localization. So essentially, if we plot a steady state probability, in this uh, case, we uh, quite expectedly see that this steady state probability is homogeneously distributed over the entire system. And this is expected because, as I said previously, this would be true for all stochastic systems with reciprocal transition rates. But now, if we assume that the rates are non-reciprocal, the quantum spectrum of this uh, model will uh, become complex. So essentially some of the eigenvalues will obtain imaginary uh, eigenvalues. And if we consider how the, uh, the spectrum changes when we go from quantum to stochastic system, we see that these uh, complex uh, edge states are shifted towards the steady state. And the steady state becomes a combination of bulk distributed and edge uh, localized states. So essentially what it shows us that the larger is non-reciprocity non of the transition rates, the more uh, the spectrum will be spread along the imaginary axis. And the more it's spread, the less the edge state will mix with the bulk and uh, lose its localization. So, uh, we can also confirm that 
uh, a stronger non-reciprocity leads to stronger edge localization by computing a probability current, which is uh, a probability flow along the edge of the system. And we can also see that this uh, probability current grows dramatically with non-reciprocity of the rates in the stochastic system. While um, in the quantum system, it actually does not depend that much on the non-reciprocity. So essentially, this tells us that, again, in order to achieve uh, strong currents, currents in stochastic systems, we need strongly non-reciprocal transition rates. And th in this model, this also means that it needs to operate strongly out of equilibrium, which also gives some hint on why so many uh, biological oscillators uh, exist so strongly out of equilibrium. So uh, with this, I would like to conclude and say that, yes, we know that uh, topological invariants and topological structures lead to edge localized states. In the, We know this for quantum condensed matter systems. And in our work, we showed that for stochastic systems, if they have reciprocal transition rates, then uh, the dynamics will be delocalized. However, if we introduce non-reciprocal transition rates, then this permits edge localization, and we showed it for different models, so one-dimensional and the two-dimensional. And we also uh, can um, understand that this localized steady state can lead to more robust biological functioning. So with this, I would like to thank my supervisor, Evelyn Tang, and thank you all for your attention.